opinion. But then if you want to go really extreme, I don't know anyone that actually likes this. It's Mate, what's that? No, 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 no. How much salt is on that, guys? Look, look at that. Where's the licorice? The licorice has disappeared. What's up, guys? It's Dwayne back again for another video, back in for the reaction. And today is a great, wonderful, amazing day because you guessed it, it's a Sweden day. These are the weirdest Swedish foods. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction. Let's go. I host a Sprout Cafe with people from all over the world that basically come on the call and practice speaking their Swedish. This is part of a much larger program where we offer classes every single day for people that are looking to get some extra training in with their Swedish. And I love his 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 like progression, like where he's come, like he's moved, he moved to Sweden, he learned Swedish. Now he's doing this course with other people that are trying to learn Swedish and sound better and speak Swedish better. Like I'm, je I'm, je I'm so jealous of him. I'm so jealous of him. I'm like, I want this experience. I want to speak Swedish. I want to live in Sweden. I'm so jealous of him. Um, but love his um, his journey. Uh, discovering Sweden and he's got he recently got his Swedish nationality right not nationality his Swedish passport I'm jealous I want a Swedish passport <laughs> then I could be in the EU okay let's carry on and a few weeks ago we had the theme of food so we basically discussed the theme of food for an entire hour and it yeah. made me realize that Sweden is a country that has a lot of strange foods that a lot of people have never had before, before moving here. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss some of the foods we talked about in our recent Sprout Cafe. And if you are Swedish, maybe you haven't even realized that some of these foods for foreigners are really quite strange. The first food I wanna talk about is Swedish pizza. Swedish pizza is mm -hmm. unlike many other pizzas around the world. And a lot of the Swedish pizzas I personally love. I know when my mom came to visit me in Sweden one time, we went to a Swedish pizza place and she had a kebab pizza. She abs- Fire, fire. I love kebab pizzas. I mean, we have those in England. We do have kebab pizzas, but that's as um, adventurous as we go in, in the UK when it comes to pizza toppings. I've heard about some of your pizza toppings. I've heard about them. I must try them. The ones that you have bananas on and you have all sorts of different weird and wonderful things on your pizzas and I want to try them. Let me know in the comment section what's your favorite topping on a Swedish pizza. Let me know. Absolutely loved it. And ever since then, whenever getting a pizza in mm. Sweden, she didn't want to go to an Italian pizza place. She always wanted to go to a Swedish pizza place and get kebab pizza. Also, Swedish people tend to put special sauces on their pizza, like Bernays sauce I love on like a black and white with some ox filet. I've also seen when Swedish people sometimes make pizza at home, I've seen people make pizza on knäckebröd. I've seen them make pizza on like oh. taco shells. So a lot of interesting things oh. when it comes to pizza. And I've also- So you make homemade pizzas at home. Do you make homemade? Let me know in the comment section if you make homemade pizzas at home. And do you use the flatbread? The one that he pronounced that I can't. <laughs> Let me know. Also seen when they take a pizza out of the oven that they cut the pizza with scissors. With scissors. I had never seen this in the US, but it is surprisingly effective and Swedish. It makes sense. It makes sense. I've got some kitchen scissors and it's so much easier to cut like a pizza with a scissor, with scissors. I, I, I don't do it. I do do it now, now that I've been learning about Sweden and all the hacks that you have. But yeah, it's so much easier. Like. Why wouldn't you? Swedish pizzas tend to have very thin crust. Now where I tend to draw the line in terms of Swedish pizzas that I like, there is a pizza called banana curry pizza, where they put <laughs> banana the on the pizza. I gotta say, this that's the one I wanna try. That's the one I want to try. Because I, I really like um, bananas. And I'm Caribbean, or my family are Caribbean, my, my grandparents are Caribbean. So I grew up in a lot of Caribbean food. I don't know if you've ever tried Caribbean food. It's delicious. I'm not sure if there are any Caribbean restaurants in Sweden. I might have to ask my cousin who lives in Sweden. Um, I'll ask my dad to ask my cousin because I'm not in contact with him. But I will be at some point. Um, 
And in the Caribbean, we eat plantain. And plantain, like, is kind of in the banana family. It tastes like a banana. And we have that with savory foods, with salty foods, with meats and with curries. So, especially curries, we have plantain with curries. So I think the combination of banana with curry on a pizza, that combination of flavors is going to be fine for me. I don't think it's going to be weird for me because I've had a curry with plantain, which is like a banana when it's fried. Um, and with and we have that with a fried dumpling sometimes, which is kind of like a bread almost, like a, a crispy, fluffy on the inside, crispy on the outside, like dough. So, pizzas are dough, curry, bananas. I'm going to like this pizza. I just know it. Let me know in the comment section if you like this pizza or you think it's a bit weird. This is not my thing, but a lot of Swedish people <laughs> are passionate about this pizza and think that banana on pizza is good. But for anyone outside of Sweden, I've never heard of anyone actually enjoying this. One I'm going to be the first one to enjoy. I just know it. Maybe. See, I see, see the connection to Sweden. This is what I mean. Like, I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like. I'm gonna fall in love when I go to Sweden. That's what I feel like. I don't know. Now my personal favorite pizzas that I've never had before moving to Sweden is called Loirum Pizza, where you basically Loirum have this pizza. like caviar sort of topping on the Ooh. pizza, oftentimes with like sour cream, chives, onions. It's a really right. good combination. If you're in Sweden and you wanna try my favorite pizza, definitely give that one a shot. While we're on the topic I'll of more it. fishy types of foods, there's a lot of fishy types of foods that I'm not a huge fan of in Sweden, like Kallis caviar, for example, that oh, yeah, people will put caviar. on like their breakfast sandwiches mm -hmm. with egg. I need to try the Kallis caviar. I feel like, is it like pate? Is it that? Maybe it's not. Or, or whatever. I've tried this a few times in other previous videos on my channel. This is definitely a weird Swedish thing that I've only seen in Sweden. Another fishy thing could be like fish balls. Personally, I've never had this, but I've talked to Swedish fish people that balls. say they would have fish balls at lunch as a kid. And I don't know, that doesn't sound too bad. Maybe something I need to try actually. There's also this dish that people normally have as part of the Christmas table around Christmas time called Jonsson's Frestelse, which is kind of like roasted potatoes, sort of like French fries, but then they put anchovies in this sauce that's mixed in with the potatoes. And I actually really like this. I'm not mad at that. That looks delicious. That looks quite nice. Potatoes, fish sauce, kind of, mmm. Yeah, it looks good to me. Anything that's like a bake, I, I, I really like. And on the topic of fishy foods, there's one food that I didn't really like when I first moved to Sweden, and this was the Baltic herring, or seal, as you say, in Swedish. But over my time of being in Sweden for a longer period, it's one of those acquired tastes that I've learned to appreciate more and more. But then you have the absolute extreme version of this that they eat in <laughs> the north of Sweden as a delicacy. And this is the fermented yeah. Baltic herring known as surströmming. This and I have tried this once on my channel. It is known as one of the smelliest foods in the entire world. And even despite trying to eat this in a way, the traditional way with the thin breads and the potato <laughs> and sour cream and onions and all this stuff, trying to mask this very potent smell, I just couldn't wrap my head around why people like this. So this is definitely one of the weirdest Swedish foods in my opinion. Another so um, he doesn't like it. I'm worried about this stroming. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to like it. I'm, I'm going to try it. I promise you, I will try it. When I go to Sweden, I'm going to try it. However, <laughs> I'm scared. And the way the reaction of people when they smell it is like they're gagging. And um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that part. But I like fish. But fermented fish. Another Swedish food that is weird for me as an American that I have tried on this channel multiple times is salty licorice. As an American, my idea of licorice was like red vines, this red, uh, and I would never really eat it that much in America. Mm. It kind of tastes like high fructose corn syrup. And then there's also black licorice, although it's less common. 
but in Sweden they'll eat black licorice which is salty and this is a very special taste for I think I, I, I come up I come up I know you guys know about my licorice phobia licorice makes me feel sick and to, <laughs> to add salt on it like which sick human being <laughs> decided you know what would go really nice with some black licorice how about we just dip it in some salt mmm delicious no why why did that person think that was a good idea I will try that as well I think I'm gonna try the sustroming and the black licorice in the same video just for torture and see let's see let's see how I deal I might really like it I might it might be uneventful but I doubt it very much I think most foreigners that aren't from sort of Scandinavian or Nordic countries, this is really something that we're not used to. And there's different levels of saltiness. For example, you have stuff that is just a little salty, and that is a bit of an acquired taste, something that I don't mind. Then you have a step up from that, like Jungivrol, much, much saltier. And this is one of those things where if you have a Swedish person that likes this, and they put a bunch of this in your candy bag when you're buying candy at the store, the salt just gets everywhere and ruins all the other candy, in my opinion. But then if you want to go really extreme, I don't know anyone that actually likes this. It's Mate, what's that? No, 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 no. How much salt is on that, guys? Look, look at that. Where's the licorice? The licorice has disappeared. It's just salt. That is like, I feel like if I put that on my toe, my blood pressure would literally like explode. Like, <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> that looks horrible. Oh man, that's torture. That looks like torture. And what is that container? I feel, I feel it's just like it's medicine. <laughs> it's horrible. It seems like it's just extra salty for the sake of being extra salty. There's this thing called Svensk Javlar. I've tried this a few times and uh, if you do like this, let me know in the comments section because this is like a little bit extreme. But yeah, salty licorice, definitely I put that in the weird Swedish food category. Absolutely. The next weird Swedish food I actually think can be kind of good and this is called a smorgostorta. Or in English, you Smoke could say, I guess, tough. sandwich cake. They have tons of different types of sandwich cakes. And I'm actually not even 100% sure mm. what's in it, but I think it's like a lot of mayonnaise and cream and dill. And sometimes you'll have fish or different meats that you put inside. I've never actually made one myself. But I really like the ones where you have the shrimp on top. Again, a very fishy thing. You're starting to see this fishy theme of Scandinavian food, but I've never heard of another country in the world that has a sandwich cake. So if you are- No, it's, 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 it's a very, it's, it's unique. I've never seen a sandwich cake before, but I'm willing to try it. Um, as strange as it looks, um, some of the ingredients sound really nice. From another country and you have something similar to this, I'd be very yeah. curious to hear about it. But in my opinion, this seems Not like something that is uniquely Scandinavian, a little bit weird, but also something that I kind of like. And the last food I want to mention in this video is the fact that, well, let's just say Swedish people have a tendency to steal food from other places and make it their own and put their own touch on it. And as we're from, I'm from England, like <laughs> we have done the same thing. We have a lot of food that doesn't belong to us and we've taken the food and changed it and made it British. So for example, our national dish, one of our, we've got two national dishes. We have fish and chips, if I'm, if I'm correct, and we have a curry. Yes, you heard that, we have a curry. Karma, which is delicious. No, is it karma that is that? No, karma's not our, or is it vindaloo? One of the two, vindaloo or karma, I'm not too sure. It's a curry. Or chicken tikka. Chicken tikka. I think it's chicken tikka. I don't even know our national dish. I think it's chicken tikka masala. And that is one of our national dishes. And it's from India. Make that make sense. But because of how multicultural our society is, we have a, a, a massive Indian population. Um, that's one of our national dishes and it's delicious and but they don't have that dish in India It's literally British Indians that have created that dish and now it's a national dish. How cool is that? So I'm with you like Swedes. I get it, you know foreign foreign dishes Making them your own. I get it
as someone that has grown up in the United States, we always had very good, authentic Mexican food in a lot of different areas where I was from. So coming to Sweden, it was interesting coming and having Swedish tacos. tacos. Swedes definitely put their own spin on Swedish tacos, tacos. and pretty much any grocery store you go to in Sweden, mm. they have a taco section in the grocery store. You get the taco crida, you get the taco chips, and there's this tradition in Sweden called Taco Friday, where everyone has a Swedish taco night I've on a Friday. Where I come from, we always called it Taco Tuesday, Tuesday, which I think makes a little bit more sense because you have the alliteration of the two T words. Taco Friday, I mean, I'm not going to complain because I like... I get it. Uh, Taco Friday because we have fish Friday. We have fish and chips on Friday. Um, and if you go to any fish and chip shop on a Friday, it's very, very busy, especially after work. Uh, fish and chip Friday. Oh, fish and chips. I miss fish and chips. So I get Taco Friday. It makes sense. Every, every country has something like that like tacos. The only reason I would complain is if I post a picture of me eating tacos and it's not a Friday and Swedish people give me crap saying that I can only eat the tacos on a Friday. In my opinion, I think we should be able to eat tacos whenever we want, multiple times a week. That's totally fine. But the <laughs> one weird thing about Swedish tacos for me is that cucumber is a common ingredient that people put on Swedish tacos. I have never seen a sense. Mexican person put cucumber on a taco before. Mate. Mate, 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 mate. They're not bothered. You're not bothered. You're not bo You're not bothered about what Mexicans do. You're you bothered about what the Swedes do. And you want to put cucumber. If you want to put cucumber on your taco, you put cucumber on your taco. Like, we put all sorts of weird stuff in our food. Like, we created a new curry. A curry that doesn't even exist in India. We created a new one. And then made it our national dish. So if you want to put cucumbers on the taco, you put cucumbers on it. <laughs> you enjoy it. And I tend to call cucumbers like Swedish jalapenos because not a lot of Swedish people like super spicy food. Uh -huh. And another food that Swedish people don't typically like as much is cilantro or coriander as it is known in Swedish. And there's actually a specific gene that's more common in Scandinavia where coriander has a soapy, not desirable uh -huh. taste. And this was... Is that a gene in Scandinavia? Is that a gene in Scandinavia? I know a lot of people that do not like coriander. So maybe it'd be interesting, it's interesting to know if they, um, if they have Scandinavian blood somewhere down the line. Um, I like cilantro or coriander. No, like, why did I call it cilantro? That's such an American thing. We say coriander just like you do. I don't know why. I just copied what he said. Um, I, li I like it. I don't mind it. Um, it doesn't taste soapy to me. So obviously I don't have those enzymes and that, that kind of taste bud. Taste bud? <laughs> I don't have a disliking to um, coriander. However, I do know people who like their parents don't like it and the children like it or there's a member of the family that doesn't like it so i don't know if it is to do with being scandinavian but i just think some people just have a genetic disposition to take it tasting like soap this was very interesting because i was traveling with my parents and some of my parents friends this past summer in portugal and my parents uh friends they did not like coriander and i asked what, what is your last name by chance? And they said their last name was Matson. And I said, okay, this totally makes sense. You have some Scandinavian heritage. You probably have this gene where you don't like coriander because your last name uh. is Matson. It started to click for me. I definitely noticed a difference that there are a lot more Maybe. people in Scandinavia that don't like coriander compared to where I'm from in the US. And I've never met a Mexican person that doesn't like cilantro. I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't met one before. Okay. But with that, guys, those were some of the weirdest foods that people eat in Sweden. If you feel like I missed any weird foods that people eat here in Sweden, let me know in the comment section, and I'm going to be very... Let me know if he's missed anything as well. Let me know in the comment section if he's missed any foods that you think might be a bit weird and I should try when I go to Sweden. Um, is it true about Swedish people and spicy food? I missed that part when he said it. Do you guys not like spicy food? And I get that from your cuisine. Your cuisine seems a bit, it lacks spice. <laughs> There's no like pepper and jalapenos and 
you know, you know, spicy stuff in your food, curries and stuff. Well, you do have curry, but I'm guessing the curry on the pizza is like a very mild curried flavor. Um, let me know. I don't mind. I like spicy food-ish, but I prefer my food not too spicy. So I'm gonna enjoy Swedish food, I think, apart from your stinky fish. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you very soon.